Hi, so this is our second example of rotational motion when we're worried about torques, and that is an object rolling down a hill. So the first one is the last video that hopefully you saw, which was the pulley where there's a weight hanging from it, and we calculated torque and from that angular acceleration. And so in this case, what we're worried about is some sort of round object that's rolling down a hill. And now mind you, it's important that it's rolling. So this rolling piece is critical because if the object does not roll, so for example, if there's no friction, it's just going to simply slide. And so in that case, if there's no friction, there's no torque acting on the ball itself because there would be nothing going on down here at the bottom of the ball or whatever it is that's rolling. And so it wouldn't roll and it would just slide down the hill and we wouldn't have to worry about anything. Um, however, but if an object rolls, then it experiences both linear and angular acceleration. And so that is, that is the key point here, that if it rolls, we have both linear acceleration A and angular acceleration alpha. And if it rolls without slipping, then we know that A and alpha are actually related where A is equal to alpha times the radius of the object. So, what we're going to do is solve this problem. And so, what we have to worry about is the same things that we worried about with the last problem. We have to worry about the sum of forces, which will give us the linear acceleration. Oops. And we have to worry about the sum of torques, which will give us the angular acceleration. So, let's get started. All right, so now let's start. So the first thing we need to do is consider all the forces that are acting on this object. So the first force is the weight. And the weight is just equal to the mass of the object times gravity, as always. The second force we have to worry about is the normal force. And we'll calculate the normal force later. And then the third force is the force due to static friction. And I am going to chain, I'm going to draw it, but I'm going to draw it down here at the surface of the, uh, you know, where the surface of the ball meets the ramp. And that is because that is actually where it's acting. And so, because this is rolling, the first thing we're going to do is assume that it's rolling without slipping. And so, if it's rolling without slipping, that means that we have to deal with static friction. Or, you know, mu sub s is going to be it. And so the fact that it rolls without slipping, that also means that A is equal to alpha times R. So in other words, the linear acceleration is equal to the uh, uh, R times the angular acceleration. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is write down our equations. And so first off, let's look at the forces in the x dimension. And I am going to pick a coordinate axis that is going to be in this direction. So I'm just going to draw this on here. So there's my x-axis and here's my y-axis. And the x-axis is aligned along with the ramp and the y-axis is perpendicular to it. So first, let's start with x. So I am going to define positive as being down the ramp. So that means that in the x-axis we have m g sine theta and you can look at the uh, angles to see exactly where the sine theta comes from, minus the force of friction is equal to mass times acceleration. In the y direction, we have the normal force pointing up, minus mg cosine theta, and it's not accelerating in the y direction, so that's just equal to zero. And then the last thing we need to do is, oops, 
the last thing we need to do, and I'm going to scoot this up here a little bit, is write down the sum of torques. And so the only torque that works, that's, act, that's acting here, is the torque due to the force of friction acting up here. And that has a radius of r. And so the sum of the torques is just going to be r times the force of friction, and this is just a magnitude, and that's going to be equal to I alpha, where I is the moment of, uh, moment of inertia of our rolling object, and alpha is the angular acceleration. And just remember what we said before, that this is rolling without slipping. So that means that the acceleration, the linear acceleration, is related to the angular acceleration. And we're going to need that to solve this problem. So now I've rewritten this so that we can um, manipulate the equations a little bit. And remember, it's critical that the ball rolls without slipping, or our, our, our round thing rolls without slipping. Because in that case, we see that the, that the sum of torques is just r times the force due to friction, and it's i alpha. That means that when a is equal to alpha r, r times the force of friction is just equal to i times uh, alpha, which is just a over r, or, rewriting it a little bit, the force of friction is just i times a over r quantity squared. And that's very useful, because what that lets us do is write the force along the slope. So that component up here that's written in the x direction, it lets us rewrite this as uh, using the moment, of ex uh, the moment of inertia. So it's mg sine of theta minus ia over r squared is just equal to mass times acceleration. And so once I do that, now I can solve this. And so I can just say mg sine theta is equal to, and I'll move the a's all over to the other side, so a times m plus i over r squared. And so what I've done is moved this term, the i a over r squared, to the right-hand side, and then I've factored out the a. And then what I can do is just divide through and solve for a. And so what I see is um, the acceleration, so I can divide through both sides by m as well, and I see that the acceleration, when I solve everything out, is just going to be equal to g sine theta over 1 plus i over m r squared. And so that's pretty convenient, because then what I can do is say, let's just use a specific example. So if I have a solid sphere, then I know that for, the solid, uh, for a solid sphere, the moment of inertia is equal to two-fifths m r squared. So in that case, I plug this in, and I get that the acceleration is equal to five-sevenths of g sine theta. And so this is important to notice, because uh, this is important, because in this case, g sine theta is the acceleration of something that just slides down a slope without rolling. The five-sevenths comes from the fact that it's rolling. And more generally, if we look at this expression up here for the acceleration, we see that if something has no moment of inertia, so if it doesn't roll at all, this goes to zero and the solution goes back to the solution that you would have if it weren't rolling, which is just g sine theta. But the bigger the moment of inertia, because it's in the denominator, the slower something is going to accelerate. So for example, if I had uh, something else, like for example, if I had a hoop, because a hoop has all of its mass, and so this is something like a, um, like a hula hoop or something like that, in that case, the moment of inertia is just mr squared. So looking at our expression back up here, that is g sine theta divided by 1 plus, and then mr squared over mr squared is just 1. So taking us back down here, 
that means that the acceleration would be equal to one-half g sine theta. 